Peak Oil, The New Reality. And here is the reality. As demand continues to increase, how will the U.S., Asia, and Europe cope with sustained high oil prices? Rapidly rising oil prices are pinching the wallets of consumers worldwide, and although oil may be in for some short-term drops, theoretically, supposedly, most experts agree that the days of cheap gasoline are gone forever, and prices will continue to climb steeply very rapidly. Can oil production keep up with rising demand, particularly from India and China? And will alternatives be available before it's too late? With so many questions and so few answers, the only thing there's no shortage of is uncertainty and confusion. It's all based, well, there's something called the Hubbard Peak Oil Bell Curve. In other words, Production can only go or rise so much. The world can only produce so much so fast. And with worldwide, us worldwide usage, over 1,000 barrels per second every day and rising rapidly. There's just no way to keep up with rising demand. Because all the easy to get to oil, well most of it's already gone. Anyway. Oil approached a record $145 a barrel in early July. Although many observers believe the price is higher than supply and demand justify, it continues to rise rapidly. Moreover, the normal symptoms of too high commodity prices, building inventories, and significantly declining usage have not appeared. Usage is increasing, so inventories tend to decrease. Demand continues to mount because of economic growth in Asia. Oil output is increasing only slowly, in part or partly because so much of the world's supplies are now in the hands of national oil companies, which have less incentive to raise production. The amount of oil still on the ground, though, though unknown, is clearly finite. Skyrocketing Asian demand. Energy demand in non Japan Asia is climbing much faster than in the developed countries. Although U.S. oil use rose at a 1.8% annual rate in 2000 to 05, and Western European demand was up only 0.4%, Asia Pacific demand jumped at least 3%. These relative growth rates will probably continue. During the current decade, projections are for China's energy demand to rise to rise at least 9.9%, nearly double the Asia Pacific average. If everything was to remain the same, which it won't, by 2030, Asia is expected to use more energy than North America and Europe combined. How's that going to work out when they can't even keep up with the demand already? That's not a good sign. It's not going to hold. It's not going to last. Energy intensity. Energy used relative to, to gross domestic product is high in most Asian countries, with the major exception being Japan. China, Taiwan, and South Korea are near the world average, measuring GDP on a purchasing power equivalent basis. While Japan is one of the most energy efficient economies in the world, India and the other developing Asian economies, however, on the other hand, are far, much far less efficient. They generally depend more on dirty coal and less on oil than the world average. Although liquids account for 37% of world energy production, they are only 29% of production for the group of Asian nations that are not currently members of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD. That is, all nations in the region except Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea. For instance, 
coal. Dirty coal is 55% of current Asian production, but only 27% for the world. China now accounts for more than 40% of the world's use of coal, and is rising rapidly. They're building like two new coal-fired power plants every single week. So, for before long, they're going to read all the coal that the world produces. How's that going to work out? What's everybody else going to do? That's not going to work. And, as a result, China has already passed the U.S. in total carbon emissions. Although China will probably increase, directly if all goes well, nuclear production. Its economy will still depend primarily on coal. Yes, dirty coal. Putting more and more pollutants and carbon dioxide into the air every day. Making the earth more and more sick. Sicker and sicker. Look at the weather already. The weather already is very strange. No, this is not going to hold. This will not work. These numbers are all off. Um, and many of these countries, notably China and India, subsidize energy consumption by controlling electricity and gasoline prices. The U.S. Energy Information Administration EIA projects that non-OECD Asian demand will rise at least 3.2% annually. Approximately half the increase should come from coal. Asia will use nearly double the amount of coal that OECD countries use. Although the use of liquids will rise slightly less than the total non-OECD Asia will still account for a rise in oil demand over the period. No, this is not good news. Un unsustainability. This is not sustainable. The world cannot keep using more and more fossil fuels. Meanwhile, the weather gets weirder and stranger. The U.S. remains the world's, the world's largest energy consumer, accounting for at least 22% of world use in 2005. Because its taxes on gasoline are relatively low, the U.S. has suffered one of the largest percentage increases in energy costs. As a result, demand is dropping more sharply than in most other developed economies, and Americans are now feeling more economic pain although it is somewhat hard to tell whether energy costs or home prices are the primary cause, although everything is connected. The overall energy intensity of the U.S. is nearer the world average, but it has the highest per capita energy consumption of any major country in the world. Anyway, this continues to rise. Rising demand for fossil fuels while at the same time, it's making the earth sicker and sicker every day. Um, are the alternatives going to come fast enough and in time? Are they going to be cheap enough for the masses to afford? Not likely. Because the world has become very greedy also. Greed? Money? Well, anyway, these are all signs the end times, transition days, last days, whatever have you call it. And all these things are connected. All the problems and troubles of the world, they are connected. There's a lot more to it than what people actually know or, or what they are talking about. Anyway, these are more signs and there are many.